welcome. So I hope you've been really reflecting and getting a lot out of um, just exploring shadow work and how that might show up on your mat, how it can show up into your life. Um, like I said, each week is going to continue to progress and um, there's so much when it comes to shadow work and the way in which the shadow reveals itself within our practice and how it lives within our body. Um, I, I can't, is it overstate? I guess overstate enough that this work takes time, practice, and just a lot of discipline and commitment because it's not fun having to orient towards the messy parts of ourselves and befriend the parts of us that we've been taught to repress, taught to hide. Um, we've been given these social masks to wear in order to thrive and survive. And in shadow work, it's asking you to take those masks off and deal with the discomfort that arises when we're beginning to orient towards the wholeness of our humanity. I asked you on Tuesday or Monday, I can't remember, to begin to write your, your narratives, your stories, your autobiography, who you are, what are the stories you tell yourself, what are your attachments to these stories. I'm asking you to do that without really um, reframing them. We're going to get to that down the road. You got to first just identify the, what these stories are. What are the traumas that you embody, the challenges, the abuses, the limiting beliefs? Um, and that's going to be a first, a good, just starting point for you, just to begin to paint out a picture of yourself, your life, and these stories. Um, I've been talking a lot about the ways in which these stories live within the body and how, when you practice yoga and other embodied practices, including pranayama, you can begin to release this energy out from the body. I want to read you something from my book really quick and then we're going to get started. But I think that this kind of encapsulates a lot of what I've been saying and give you something to consider in today's practice. Our shadow helps us to remember that everything is energy. Everything has a vibration and everything needs space to move, shift, and release. Like I had said the other day, um, energy is defined as vibration with information. Like for example, this book is energy. Um, so is your computer or my cup of tea. These are exa examples of energy that you can see and interact with. Um, but there are forms of energy, as I said the other day, subtle energy that you can't see, but you can definitely experience them. Energies like thoughts and feelings, including love and joy, as well as fear, rage, and grief. All energies have an effect on our bodies and our minds. Repressed emotions are energy that has no space to move, shift, and release. When something triggers them, they either burst forth or burrow further down. If they do explode, the release can feel good, at least temporarily but we must face them when they surface. Otherwise, their newly released energy can make us critical, judgmental, confrontational, aggressive, or even withdrawn or shut down. This behavior is an impulsive or shadow reaction to the shadow emotions begging to be heard, which creates more fear, more hate, and of course, more separation, the opposite of yoga. Unless we process these deeper emotions, they stay within us and impact our life and our health, or they get projected outward, affecting our relationships and our work in the world. You can't run from what is within you. The shadow self is not bad. All it's asking is to be understood. So later on, I'm going to be talking a little bit more about shadow behaviors, about projections about the ways in which um, when we deal with our shadow self, 
it allows us to have more empathy and compassion in relationship to other people. Um, Carl Jung says something, everything that irritates us about others can lead us to an understanding of ourselves. So later on, I'm gonna talk a little bit more about this, about what happens when we repress the shadow and the impact that it has on our relationships with others. Okay, so in today's class, I'm gonna take the, pra the poses that we did on Tuesday and I'm gonna integrate them in a moderately placed, paced flow class. The, uh, the work for you riffing off of last week, is to continue to focus on the sensation, getting as present as you can in the pose, observing the way in which your brain or your mind um, takes us out of present time. Notice also your emotional response to the poses. If you get aggressive, um, angry at me, at yourself, at your cat who crosses your, your mat. Just notice your reaction to being in some of these poses, what happens on the mat and the way in which the shadow is trying to reveal itself. What happens on the mat um, is an opportunity for us to understand our behavior off of the mat. So if we can manage to deal with it here, it can help us integrate it so that we're not reactive in life when that shadow comes up. Um, so breathe, focus, observe. All right, go ahead and sit up tall. And so as you ground yourself, either eyes closed or softly open, palms on the lap, thumbs together, you track the body, All right? That's the first thing you do. You track the body, you feel for, for temperature on your skin, You feel for pressure, the connection between your physical body and the ground beneath you. And then you track for tension. Perhaps in your hips, your lower back, your belly, your jaw. You try to organize the spine evenly on the pelvis, noticing if the weight is heavier on one of your sit bones as opposed to the other. And then allow yourself the opportunity to take a few very deep calming breaths. Taking that breath all the way down to the bottoms of the lungs. We all have a persona, a shadow, and a self. The ego is our identity, and the persona is the mask that we wear in order to survive and thrive. It's our social personality. And then of course, the shadow are the aspects of ourselves that we hide so that we can integrate with the world around us and find acceptance. The ego is the ahamkara, the I-ness. Place your palms into prayer. Calling in the God of our own unique understanding, we ask May we have the strength to continue doing this deep inner work, confronting our persona, our shadow, and our self, 
so that we can learn more about the human experience and the ways in which we suppress the aspects of self that we do not like or are conditioned to judge. We understand that the practice of yoga means that there is no separation and our work is to befriend all aspects so that we can develop the, the necessary compassion and empathy that can open our hearts, develop our self-esteem, and in learning to love ourselves fully and wholly, we learn to embrace and love all beings as they are, as they move through their own journey of integration and wholeness. We ask may this practice be blessed. And then together we offer this blessing with one single om. Take a deep breath in. And then release your hands. Come on to all fours. Have your wrists in front of the shoulders, fingers spread wide. Inhale, arch the back and let the shoulders pull away from the jaw. And then press back into downward dog, keeping the knees bent. So check your hands to make sure that all four points of the palm are pressing firmly into the earth and you're not cupping the hands. This could cause pain in the wrists. As you extend and elongate the arms, let the ears come along the inner upper arms. Take a deep breath in, then begin to descend the heels down towards the floor, taking some deep breaths into the backs of the legs, being aware of the sensation you feel. Just organically, this first downward dog of your morning or day. And then walk your feet to your hands. Separate your feet hips width apart. Keep the knees bent a little. Spread your toes and really organize your feet evenly on the floor so that the weight is not collapsing on the inner ankles. The inner ankles reach towards the outer ankles, creating an arch. Let the neck release. Grab hold of the elbows. The knees stay bent, but you can still spin the inner thighs away from you. And then soften the spine. Some of you maybe, depending on the flexibility of your hamstrings, can begin to press the legs straighter or toward too straight. And then breathe here. Feeling into the belly of the hamstrings, into the attachments right at the sit bones, towards the backs of the knees. Fingertips to the floor. Inhale, look up and lengthen, straighten the legs. Hands to the hips. Flat back to stand. Feet together. Palms right at the heart. Take a moment here. Surya Namaskara A. Let's take our time. So you're going to inhale, arms reach. Look up and touch your palms. Exhale, fold all the way forward, fingertips on the floor, relax your head and neck. Inhale, look up and lengthen the spine. Exhale, bend your knees, step back into a push-up position, hold. Look forward, take a deep breath in. Exhale, knees down, toes extend away, lower your body all the way to the earth. Inhale, come up into cobra, the pelvis remains on the floor. Elbows draw in, shoulders pull back. As you push your feet down, grip your quads so the kneecaps lift. Take a deep breath in. Then exhale, chest down. Curl your toes under, and you're going to press back slowly into downward dog and breathe. So just taking the time to begin to warm up the body, the connective tissue, the, the gross musculature, the fascia, bringing blood, fluid, prana throughout the whole of the body. 
Come back into a push-up position. Either put your knees onto the floor or lower Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale, either Cobra or Upward Facing Dog. As you push down into the feet, the inner thighs lift. The hands press, the shoulder blades pull back. You want to gaze upward if you can without letting your neck get crunched. You want to keep the elongation in the back of the neck. And then exhale, Downward Dog. Breathe here. So track the sensation. A lot of students of vinyasa flow. We have a hard time orienting ourselves to static asana, meaning poses that you hold for a longer period of time. There's a lot of reasons for that. But I really want to invite you, in this class, we're going to be going into some static poses, holding them. It's in the static pose that you really begin to feel the sensation and the way in which our mind operates in order to avoid the discomfort and find other ways to self-soothe. And when that doesn't work, that's when we begin to get irritated or judgmental. So see if that's true for you in the experience. In vinyasa, we often just bypass those static poses so that we don't have to feel anything. Stretch it back and then walk or jump your feet to your hands. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, fold. Inhale, come on up all the way. Arms reach. And exhale. Palms right at the heart. Again, inhale, reach. Exhale, fold. Find that breath. Prioritize it. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, step back, top of a push-up, lower chaturanga. Inhale, upward dog. And exhale, downward dog. So always remember that you have agency and choice. You decide what your edge is and if you want to play it or not. That everyone has a different edge. But the playing field gets leveled when we reach our edge. That's when the yoga really kicks in. Can you stay present to what is? Take another deep breath, stretch back, and then walk or jump your feet to your hands. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, fold. Inhale, come on up all the way, arms reach. And exhale, palms right at the heart. Let's do this one more time. Inhale, follow the breath. Exhale. Inhale, exhale, inhale, and exhale, breathe. Step your right foot forward, stay on the ball of the back foot, hold here. You're going to keep, stay on the ball of the back foot, stay up onto your fingertips or you can put your hands onto blocks. Find the stability of that back leg so the shin pushes into the calf, the thigh up into the hamstring. Push down into that right foot as your right hip pulls back, the sternum elongates forward. Find a focal point in front of you and take three deep breaths. Try not to soften into the pelvis. Keep that point of resistance so even the hip bones are pulling inward towards each other. Deep breath in. Exhale, put your left knee down. Extend your left toes away from you. You're going to lean forward a little bit so you're rolling over the skin of your left knee. 
This is going to bring your right knee slightly forward over your toes. Walk your hands forward, lift the chest up. Use your right arm to press into your right leg so that you're not letting the knee press open. The left hip rotates forward and you're going to breathe into that deep, deep muscle that runs along the inside of the left hip, the psoas muscle that connects the torso, the upper part of the body with the lower part of the body. Couple more deep breaths. Then from here, you're going to walk your hands back a little bit. And as you do, you're going to straighten the right leg, walk your right foot up a couple of inches and flex the right foot. Either put your hands on blocks or stay on your fingertips. Draw your right hip back. Inhale, lengthen. Don't fold over your right leg. Just lengthen. Keep that right hip pulled back. Take some breaths here. You're still going to feel this in your hamstring, even if you're not folding forward. We're going to be repeating this pose later on. Right now, this is just part of the warm-ups, just to get some muscle memory in there. So chest forward, shoulders down the back. Push through the heel. The pinky toe side of the right foot pulls back. Perhaps you're going to feel this right behind the knee, maybe. Okay, now bend your right knee a little bit. You're going to slide your heel back until you can bend your knee directly over the ankle. Put your hands flat on the floor, curl your back toes under. You're going to lift that left knee. Come back up onto your fingertips and now you're going to lift that left leg up, flex the foot, walk the hands out further so your shoulders are right over your wrists and you can pull your chest forward. Make sure your right foot is straight, not kind of um, where your heel turns in, you want it straight. The inner right thigh pushes back, that left leg lifts. Again, don't fold, keep your chest forward. That's why elevating yourself on blocks might be helpful. Pretend there's a wall behind that left heel, push into that wall. Exhale, bring your left foot down to meet the right. Inhale, look up, lengthen. Exhale, fold. Inhale, come on up to stand. Arms reach. And exhale, palms at the heart. Hold for a moment. And just notice just the difference between one side to the other. Just feel, track the energy. Inhale, arms reach. Exhale, fold. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, step it back and lower. Inhale, upward dog. And exhale, downward dog. Step your left foot forwards down the ball of the back foot. Set up the pose. The bottom foot, the left foot is straight. You push through the right heel. The sternum elongates forward. The shoulders lay down the back. Find a focal point. Firm the hips inward towards each other so that the, the greater trochanter, right at the top of the femur, that nubby bone that comes out, you want to feel it pulling into the socket. And breathe.
exhale, right knee down, extend the right toes away, roll over your knee a little bit, and then this brings that left knee forward over the toes, lift the chest. Use your left arm to press up against that left leg, rotate your right hip forward, and breathe. From here, you're going to lean back, walk your hands back, slide your left foot slightly forward, flex the foot. So you want to make sure your right knee is underneath your right hip, your left foot is flexed. Inhale, lengthen, walk your hands forward or put your hands on blocks. Avoid folding over that leg, instead you want to extend and lengthen. So you're pulling your torso off of the pelvis, that left hip pulls back. The extension in your torso is what's going to grab at the hamstring. If you round your back as you fold into it, you lose that. That extension is what helps to get that grab. So find your breath. And if your leg begins to tremble or shake, just let it. Just let your body energetically discharge some of the energy if that's what your body wants to do. Try not to control it. And breathe. Inhale, lengthen the chest, begin to slide your left foot back a little bit, walk your hands back, until you can comfortably bend your left knee right on top of your left ankle. Curl your back toes under, lift the right knee, and then from here, you're going to lift that right leg up, walk your fingertips forward, drop the right hip so it's even with the left, flex the foot. Keep the chest extending forward. Lift the leg up higher and now breathe here. Another deep breath, and exhale, bring your right foot to meet the left, separate your feet hips width apart, grab hold of the big toes. Inhale, look up, lengthen, exhale, fold, top of the head down towards the floor, relax the neck, and breathe here, inner thighs press back. Inhale, look up and lengthen, hands to the hips, flat back to stand, feet together. 
take a moment. And again, just now observe what happens when we deliberately target areas in our body. You can feel that openness, but we don't want to bypass it quickly. We want to let it integrate, be present to it. Palms at the heart. Inhale, arms reach. Exhale, fold all the way forward, hands down. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, step it back and lower. Inhale, upward dog. And exhale, downward dog. Step your right foot forward, stay on the ball of the back foot. Inhale, come up into crescent. Interlace your fingers except for the index and extend the arms straight. Rotate your left hip forward, draw your tailbone in so you feel the pull right along that psoas. And then begin to bend your right knee deeper as long as you don't collapse your back. You want to keep your front ribs pulling downward right towards the frontal hip bones. Keep breathing. Take a deep breath. Exhale, both hands down, hold. Step your back foot in about a foot. Make sure your right heel and your left heel are on the same line. Draw your right hip back, straighten the legs. I'm gonna grab my blocks here. If you have your blocks, I recommend using them too. Because we're gonna go back into the hamstrings again, keeping that right hip back. I don't want you to fold over that right leg. Stay up onto the blocks. You can come up onto the highest. To the medium. Or to its lowest point. You find which works best for you. In our mind, often we think, well, if we go to the lowest point, that's gotta be the deepest, but that's not actually true. Because if going to the lowest point, point forces your back to round to accommodate that, then you're going to lose that ability to get your chest forward. The chest coming forward is what's going to grab at the pelvis and pull at the attachments right at the very top of the hamstrings. Grip the quad so that you don't overstretch. Continue to pull the sternum forward. And then from here, look forward. Bend your right knee a little bit. Step your left foot to meet the right. Remove the blocks. Bend the knees a little bit. You're going to wrap your arms around the legs, grabbing hold of either elbow. Take a deep breath in. Exhale, release your head. And then press the legs straighter if you can, trying to hug your chest into the thighs. Just do the best you can here. Pressing the calves against the arms and the arms against the calves. And if your legs begin to tremble, let them. Look forward, bend the knees a little, fingertips on the floor, inhale, lengthen. Hands to the hips, flat back to stand, straighten the legs, arms down by your sides. Take a breath. Palms at the heart. Inhale, arms reach. Exhale, fold. 
Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, step or jump. Chaturanga. Inhale, upward dog. And exhale, downward dog. Step your left foot forward, stay on the ball of the back foot. Inhale, up into crescent. Interlace your fingers except for the index, but do it the opposite way that you did before. So where your interlaces, it'll feel awkward. Arms reach. Press through that right heel. Tailbone in. Bend the knee. Find a focal point and breathe. Exhale, both hands down. Step the back foot in about a foot. Take your blocks. Let that left hip pull back, the right hip forward so that the pelvis is organized. Extend and lengthen your sternum forward off the navel. Grip the quads. And then just wait and observe. Still, believe it or not, just warming up the hamstrings. Look forward, bend your knees a little bit, step your right foot to meet your left, remove the blocks. Again, bend the knees a little bit, wrap your arms around, grab hold of the elbows if you can, doing it the, grabbing it with the opposite way that you did before. So before you may have had your left hand on, left arm on the inside, now have the right arm in the inside. And then straighten the legs, hug it in. Let the neck release. Bend your knees, fingertips to the floor. Inhale, lengthen, hands to the hips. Flat back to stand, straighten the legs. Come into Tadasana. Take a moment. Now from here, just to kind of churn the energy through, we're going to move through Surya Namaskara B. Bend your knees, inhale, arms reach. Exhale, fold all the way forward. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, step it back, lower. Inhale, upward dog. Exhale. Downward dog, right foot forward, back foot flat. Inhale, nice and slowly, come all the way up, ground your feet and reach. Exhale, both hands down, step it back, chaturanga. Inhale, upward dog. Exhale, downward dog, left foot forward, back foot flat. Inhale, come on up all the way, arms reach. Exhale, both hands down, step it back, lower. Inhale, upward dog. And exhale, downward dog, and breathe.
the end of the exhale, walk or jump your feet to your hands. Inhale, look up. Exhale, fold. Bend your knees. You're actually going to take your blocks now and bring your blocks behind you. Stack them. And then bring your butt all the way down onto the blocks. Keep your spine lifted. Knees are straight ahead. Left arm up. Hook the left arm to the outside of the right knee. You're going to take your right hand and your thumb and index finger, you're going to spread them apart and then press down onto the very top of the thigh, right, right in front of the pelvis. Anchor it down, lift the chest, push against the knees, but at the same time, push the knees against the arm and then twist, look out over your shoulder. You want to really press that femur down. This is going to help to relieve any of the tension that might be accumulating at the lower back from doing so many internally rotated actions. Especially if you've been really following the cueing and you're getting out of habits, you're going to feel sore above and below where your natural mobility is, especially in the lower back. Exhale, face forward. Hook your right elbow to the outside, your left hand, you're going to press down. See, I'm pushing right here. I'm going to go right to the very top of the femur. I'm going to push down. Elbow against the knee, knee against the elbow. Chest lifts and then twist. Exhale, face forward. From here, you're gonna put your fingertips onto the floor. Lean forward, straighten the legs. Remove the blocks. Separate your feet hips width apart. Slide your hands underneath your feet. Stand directly onto the palms. The big toes come right up to the wrists. Inhale, look up, lengthen. Press the legs as straight as you can. If you can, now exhale, fold pulling at the feet as you soften into the spine. Inhale, look up, lengthen. Release the feet, hands to the hips. Flat back to stand, feet together, come into Tadasana, take a breath. Now I'm going to actually step open to the side and you're going to spread your legs apart. I'm going to grab a block here, put the block right on the floor in front. Hands onto the hips, feet press, inner ankles lift. Inhale, lift the chest. Exhale, fold, hands onto the block. I'm going to go back a little bit. I'm not sure. Now you can see the block. My hands are on the block. And now you're going to slide the block forward. So you're coming into a spread leg downward dog kind of thing. Let the ears come along the inner upper arms. Tailbone draws away. Breathe here. Now gently tip the tailbone up a little bit so the sit bones lift and you'll feel the grab of the hamstrings. Don't over arch that back and try not to collapse into the armpits. Just keep the stability of the spine. Slide the block back. I'm going to put the block behind me. Inhale, lengthen. I'm going to bring the feet a little closer together, not that much closer. And now grab hold of the big toes. So the feet are maybe three and a half, four feet apart. Inhale, lengthen. And exhale, fold. Relax the neck.
Inhale, look up. Come up onto your fingertips, hands to the hips, and stand. Bring your feet together. Come into Tadasana. Take some breaths. Now from here, you're going to grab your strap. Feet press, the feet are straight ahead. Squeeze your right knee into your chest. Bend the left knee a little bit because this will help with balance. Take your strap around the ball of the foot and then slowly begin to straighten the left leg. Careful not to hyperextend. If you do, keep the left knee bent and then press that right leg straight. Use your right arm to gently pull the right side of the foot back. Lift it up as high as you can and breathe. And then bend the right knee, release the strap, and release. Come into Tadasana, holding the strap. Take a breath. And then bend your knees a little bit. Left knee pulls in. Use that strap. Straighten the bottom leg. Make sure the bottom foot stays, remains straight. Then press your left leg straight. Pull on that left arm a little bit so the pinky toe side of the left foot pulls back. Squeeze that, bend the left knee, release the strap, and then bring both feet together. Take a moment here. Hands to the hips, spread your legs apart again. Inhale, chest rises. Exhale, fold, hands to the floor. Inhale, look up. Exhale, walk your hands between your legs a little bit. Press the elbows in, and then fold. Inhale, look up, straighten the arms. Now from here, you're gonna to turn towards your left leg, grab hold of the left leg, try not to let the right hip drop, keep it lifted, and then you're gonna pull your torso in towards the left leg, breathing deeply into the hamstring here. Straighten the arms, walk your hands down the center. Bring your hands over to the right ankle, turn your torso and fold. Try not to let the left hip drop, keep the pelvis level. And then walk your hands back down the center. Inhale, lengthen. And one more time, exhale, fold. Walk the hands between your legs. Press the elbows in.
Inhale, walk your hands forward, straighten the arms. Bring your feet a little closer together just to release the hamstrings a bit. Then the hands to the hips. Come up to stand and step to the front of the mat. Palms right at the heart. Take a moment. Notice the sensation. It doesn't feel fluid, open. Does it feel electric? Is there a tingly sensation? Do you feel queasy, warm? Just note, just what are you experiencing in your body, in your pose? What are the sensations? What are the emotions? Resistance, judgment, criticism, self-beat, laziness, perfectionism. Without making any of it good or bad, right or wrong, just observe. Inhale, arms reach. Exhale, fold. Inhale, look up. Exhale, step or jump back, chaturanga. Inhale, upward dog. And exhale, downward facing dog. Step your right foot forward, turn your back foot flat, hold. Grab those blocks. Let that right hip pull back, straighten the right leg. Inhale, look up and lengthen. Now what you're gonna do is you're gonna take those blocks and bring them back, kind of between the legs, and then turn your hands around so that the wrists face forward. Keep the right hip back. Bring the blocks back further if you can. This is gonna be dependent upon your flexibility. But now we're gonna to begin to fold over the right leg and breathe. Grip your quads. Notice the sensations you feel, target them. Maybe it's in the hips. Maybe it's all the way down into the calf. Inhale, look up. <clears throat> Bring those blocks forward. Turn your hands around. Bend your right knee a little bit. Come up onto the ball of the back foot. Come down onto your left knee. Extend your left toes away from you. Lean back, slide the blocks back a bit. Walk your right leg forward and then flex the foot. Keep your left knee under the left hip. Now walk the blocks forward. Inhale, look up, lengthen, draw your right hip back and then exhale, fold over your straight right leg. And breathe. Some of you are going to stay here. Others of you walk your hands back. You're going to slide your right heel back and you're going to come back onto your buttocks. This is why I'm saying some of you are going to stay here. This next pose is very dependent upon the mobility of your left knee. You're going to take your left hand and move your left calf out of the way a little bit. Bend your right knee. You're going to grab that strap you're going to bring it around the right foot and then stretch your right leg up. Try not to round your back here. Lift and lengthen and then point your foot away from you and breathe here. So just a different, just a different expression of the pose. So wherever you're at, there's a lot of work to be done.
and then you're going to bend that knee, release the strap. You're going to reverse it. So the foot is on the floor, lean forward, walk your hands forward. You can use your right ankle and bring that right, excuse me, you can use your right hand to bring your right heel forward again. So now you're back in this fold. And then inhale, everyone look up, slide your blocks back a bit. Bend your right knee a little bit and slide your right foot back until you can bend your right knee and it's on top of the ankle. Walk the blocks forward, curl your back toes under, lift the left knee, then lean out over your right leg, lift that left leg up. Inhale, look up and lengthen. Your hands are on your blocks. Now you're going to begin to bend the elbows a little bit. Put your fingertips on the floor if you can, next to your right foot on either side. I'm going to move this candle so I don't burn my bun off. And then fold and breathe. And then inhale, look up, bend your right knee, bring your left foot to meet the right. Inhale, lengthen, hands to the hips, and then come up to stand, flat back, come into Tadasana. Take a moment there. Okay, and then inhale, reach. Exhale, fold. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, step or jump. Chaturanga. Inhale, upward dog. Exhale, downward dog. Left foot forward, back foot flat. Straight in the left leg. Take blocks. Bring them between, on either side of the leg, but between the feet. Turn your hands around. Walk the blocks out more behind you. Inhale, lengthen, and then fold. Notice if one side is tighter than the other. Notice the temperature, the pressure, the tension. Notice if you've dissociated or checked out in any way. Notice if you keep fidgeting, trying to go deeper into the stretch so as to avoid just being present. Notice where your mind goes to when you don't want to be present. What do you use as a way to self-soothe to avoid the discomfort? Do you think about the needs of your children? or some conversation you had with a partner or a coworker? Do you think about the food you're gonna make as soon as class is over? Just get curious. Inhale, look up, walk those blocks forward, bend your left knee, come on the ball of that right foot, then come down onto the right knee, extend the right toes away, straight in the left leg. Walk the left foot up a little bit, flex the foot. Inhale, lengthen, and then fold over your straight left leg. So we're going to be here for a little bit. At one point, I'm going to give you another, some of you, another pose to do if your knees, your right knee on this side, can tolerate the shape. Otherwise, just stay here, taking advantage of the time and the heat that's cultivated when you wait.
the leg starts to shake, just let it. And then for some of you, walk your hands back, slide that heel back, drop down onto your buttocks, use your right hand to grab the calf and to pull the calf flesh away. Bend your left knee using the strap, put the strap around the ball of the foot and then straighten your leg. Try not to round. You want to lift and pull and breathe. And then bend your left knee a bit, release the strap, foot on the floor, lean forward, walk your hands forward, use your left hand to pull that left heel forward again if you need to. Inhale, lengthen, and again, fold over that left leg. Now everybody's back into this, this is Arda Hanumanasana half splits variation. Then inhale, look up. Everybody bend your left knee a little bit and slide the heel back until the knee is over the ankle. Put your hands on those blocks. Pull the blocks back a bit. Curl the right, knee, the right toes under. Lift the right knee up. Walk the blocks forward and then lift that right leg up off the floor, dropping the hip, pointing the toes. Inhale, lengthen. Either stay here or some of you can put your fingertips on the floor and then fold into your straight left leg. Inhale, look up, hands back onto the blocks, straight in the arms, and lower your right leg to meet the left. Inhale, lengthen, move the blocks, hands to the hips, slowly come up to stand, Tadasana. Feeling it? Inhale, reach. Exhale, fold. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, step it back and lower. Inhale, upward dog. And then exhale, downward dog. Take a breath here. At the end of the exhale, jump through to sitting. Extend your leg straight out in front of you. Take that right foot, bring it into the inside of the left thigh. You can elevate yourself on blankets if you'd like to. You can even put some blankets under the knee. Hands onto the floor, you're going to inhale, lengthen, and then exhale, fold, grab what you can. And just hold here for a moment. So much of the work that we have been done has been focused on the hamstrings, on the legs. With the invitation for you to notice your reactivity, to notice your breath to get a sense of what your shadow is, what comes up on the mat for you, what resistance, what judgment, what criticism. In a couple of weeks when we get to the first chakra, I'm actually gonna re repeat this sequence, but then redirect your attention to the actual narratives that live within this part of the body so that you have a chance to get a sense of why there may have been some resistance that came up. Same sequence. But what, how is your experience different when your attention is directed 
towards the narratives that actually live within the body. Inhale, come on up. Bring that right knee in. Extend the right leg forward. Come into Dandasana, hold. Switch, left foot comes in, both hands on the floor. Inhale, lengthen, turn your spine a little bit and then fold over that straight right leg. Close your eyes here. So we wanna remember that shadow work is an opportunity to bring the unconscious into consciousness. By doing this, it allows us to address our negative impulses, our resistances, our limiting beliefs, our insecurities, and even our past pain. these aspects of self that we've hidden from ourselves and from the world. Inhale, come up. Bring that left knee in. Straighten both legs out. Reach underneath the buttocks and pull the flesh back. Hands onto the floor. Inhale, lengthen. And exhale, fold. Grab what you can. Close your eyes. Just to close your eyes and breathe. And you're gonna hold Paschimottanasana just about a minute or so before we move into Shavasana. Again, this practice really targeting such a specific part of the body. I had said earlier in the very beginning of the class, I think in the meditation, a quote from Jung, Everything that irritates us about others can lead us to an understanding of ourselves. I want you to consider something that's called shadow behavior. And shadow behavior is a negative response that we have to people, events, situ and situations. that is usually unintentional, an automatic response, and unconscious. These shadow behaviors can include acting aggressively, acting defensively. They can cause us to resist change and to often be manipulative. Our work is to understand our shadow and the behavior that is motivated by the shadow self so that we can take ownership and accountability. Otherwise, that repressed shadow can cause us to experience self-loathing, self-deceit, Anxiety, depression, self-absorption, um, self-sabotage, low self-esteem. It can also, when we deny those qualities within ourselves, it can cause us to really see those qualities in others. And then we move towards projection. For an example, very often if we get annoyed or irritated at someone because they're being rude or impatient or critical or mean, there's a really good chance that you might not have yet owned those qualities within yourself. So we project onto others what we really can't stand within us and if we learn how to integrate those disowned selves then maybe perhaps we'll be more mindful more compassionate towards others inhale come up 
and roll all the way out until you're laying flat onto your back. Lying flat on your back, come into Shavasana. You're going to draw the shoulders away from the neck. Let your feet flop open. And then close your eyes. Take a very deep breath in. Exhale it out through the mouth. the next few moments, just allow your body to soften, to relax into the earth. I'm going to lead, lead, lead you with just some final considerations about the ego. You have an ego for a reason. It's your self-image your personality, the identity you take on. It would be next to impossible to live without one. The ego helps you navigate the world and be a friend, a parent, a lover, a productive human being. The ego is called amakara in Sanskrit, in Sanskrit which means I-ness or the I-maker. It's the identification you have with the physical body, other people, and the world around you through your five senses and your mind. The ego includes your judgments, projections, prejudices, biases, labels, titles, roles, and even the masks you wear to hide your true self and your shadow self. Having an ego isn't a problem. In fact, to deny the ego is to deny our own humanity. But over-identifying with it is believing your own hype is, and separating ourselves from or pitting ourselves against others is. BKS Iyengar calls this falling for the impersonation of our soul by our ego. When we are in our ego, we become obsessed with our narrative, one we carefully curate and manage. There is no room for the shadow. We love a good self-aggrandizing storyline like I'm the the strongest, most flexible practitioner in this studio, or I'm a loving mom, dad, friend, partner. And outwardly, at least, we identify it with 100%. Our self-worth and self-confidence depend on it being true. But that can backfire. So let me ask you this. What if you aren't what you project? If you define yourself as a loving partner, for example, what happens when you have one of those days when you're not so loving? When you're raging or being arrogant? Who are you then? A failure? If you pin your worth on external or material things, the amount of money you have, the relationship you're in, what you're capable of doing, when any of that collapses, your self-worth collapses along with it. When you feel ashamed, less than, or a failure, do you ever feel unworthy of your own love or other people's? When you become too self-absorbed, is it impossible to separate who you are, your true nature, your highest self, from the limitations of your narrative, your ego, or small self? From a spiritual perspective, getting stuck in the ego's clutches means that we consider ourselves to be somehow unique which keeps us separate from others and from God. Of course, yoga teaches us that everything is connected and that this separation we perceive is, in fact, an illusion. But we can't move into these higher aspects, these higher states of consciousness, without first understanding the ego, anticipating it, and working with it. After all, we can't change what we won't see.
And bringing your attention back to your breath. Inhale and reach your arms up over your head and get a good stretch. Squeeze your knees into your chest. Roll to your side and press back up into a seated position, sitting up as tall as you can. Take a moment here for integration. How can I be substantial if I do not cast a shadow? I must have a dark side also if I am to be whole. I cannot know the light without also understanding the shadow. Place your palms into prayer and together we take a very deep breath in. Exhale it out through the mouth. And we close this practice by giving thanks to God for these tools of yoga and breath work, of self-study that bring us, us closer to our inner reality. We ask to continue to have the strength to orient, orient ourselves to our shadow self so that we can see and understand the aspects of being that often cause us to feel separated from ourselves and from each other and therefore the world around us. We ask for healing and for integration, for acceptance and empowerment. We ask for clarity, commitment, surrender. We ask for peace. And then together we offer this blessing with one single om. Take a deep breath in. Ooh. Lower your chin to your chest. Open your eyes and inhale. Come up. Thank you so much for class. Namaste.